made on the changes to the FA Cup. What have you made of the fact that they're going to get the replays and the FA Cup final will now be played on the penultimate weekend of the season? Uh, I mean, the, the debate on how much football is getting played by individuals. Um, are we asking too much of them as players and all the rest of it? So there's a bigger picture debate, I think, particularly the teams that are super successful every season, playing all sorts of different trophies. Um, for the beauty of the cup, I suppose it changes, obviously. Um, the glamour of it and the, the kind of prestige of it changes. But I don't know, they're cramming so much into football now and certainly in the Premier League season. Um, and as I said, particularly the teams that are, are doing well in all sorts of different competitions. Um, I don't think it's an easy situation um, because there are a lot of games. Um, and as I said, the higher up you go, the more trophies you're in. It does get a lot of games. You know, players are playing 55, 65 games a season and it does get challenging, I think, for them. And, you, when you nearly and that's not including internationals, don't forget, as well. Yeah, and when you nearly got to the final Chesterfield, that was the only replay. Pesky referees, I think. Blooming referees. <laughs> well, I think the only replay that you played in that run was, was the actual semi final and the replays in semi finals. Years, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's. Uh, but like I said, I don't. I don't think it's an easy situation. Um, you know, to to make them them decisions and who's saying what and who wants what and you know in the the latest debate about you know player well being and then you know heading the ball and extra time they keep adding more extra time. You know, where do, where does it all live? Which one's which? So, but generally speaking, I think most managers would suggest that players play a lot of games, um, particularly the ones who are involved in international tournaments as well. How is your squad looking, in particular, Jared Branthwaite? How serious <coughs> is the injury to him? And Dominic Calvert-Lewin, will he be fit for the weekend? Yeah, both um, uh, trained. We were light today, uh, but both trained light and came through it. So I'd, uh, we hope there's no reaction to that. Um, Pose is, um, he'll be out for the season. He will need uh, surgery. Very unfortunate. Um, very unfortunate injury. Um, you know, we're, we're disappointed in that one for him as much as us as well. And Shay, we're waiting on, but hopefully it'll calm down quickly. But touch and go at best for this weekend. What about Idrissa Garnagay? Yeah, he should be okay. Um, his calf settled. He trained today. Um, similar, you know, low level training today, but he trained and he was okay. How hopeful are you that Jared will be okay to take his place in the heart of your defence? Yeah, as I said, it, we, he's come through today, but it was a light session. There'll be a bit more on it tomorrow. Um, so hopefully there's no reaction today and therefore he can move forward tomorrow. How do you go about just parking what happened on Monday night? We can't just park it, that's for sure. I certainly haven't. Um, players were affected by it, very disappointed, as, as was I in my part, of course, as manager. Um, I take responsibility, inevitably. Um, you know, and, and we spoke to the players about it. They fed back their disappointment as well as mine. Um, but, but equally, you know, by now we've made sense of it, of course. But you know, a day after we certainly didn't, it was a challenge. Um, but now you do have to park it. So we, we've had a chat about it this morning to finish it off and just go, right, that's gone. We move forwards. When you say you've made sense of it, what have you been able to pinpoint? Well, just, just the, the basics. You know, you've you got to do the basics. You've got to, you've got to work, you've got to hurry, you've got to press, you've got to fight, you've got to tackle. Um, you've got to play, of course. Um, and we were nowhere near either. You know, there was pockets of it. You know, I think we started bizarrely, started well and should have went 1-0 up. But pockets are not enough. And any, any formal match, but certainly not when you're away at places like Chelsea. Although they're having an up and down time, they've still got some very, very talented players. Um, and we let them use their talent rather than stopping it. Given it's two clubs as well who are so close to each other in the table, two clubs who've got appeals pending as well against a points deduction, do we look at this as a, as a must win? I think everyone uses that. I mean, since I've been at Everton Football Club, I've, I've tried to make it clear every game should be a must win. It should be at every football club, but I think, you know, the, the stature and the grandeur of the club, I think every game must be a must win. That's what I want the players' mentality to be. Um, endlessly spoken since I've been here about finding consistency. We have had spells and we have, we've had spells and we haven't, and that we certainly haven't over the last run. Um, but equally, making sense of that and, and using the, the things we learn and using that to move forward. So the next one's a big one, but they should all be big games when you're wearing sure. Everton shirt. Hi, Sean. Hi, Sean. Um, just looking at Nottingham Forest <coughs> recently, the, the run that they've had, they've picked up a number of points. They've had one defeat in their last five games. Have you seen something more from them in these matches than maybe before that it's going to be a challenge for you? I think if you stretch their run a bit longer, I think you'll find them won that many. Um, I think it's two in 13 or something like that. So... You know, that doesn't mean they're not a fair side. Um, they're working, I've seen them. They're working, they're, they're, they're like most teams, they're trying to get things right. Um, it's a challenge for them, but it's not my concern. My concern is what we're doing. Do you see a difference in them under Nuno, though, that, that will mean that this game is maybe different for you? Um, 
I don't think it's been radical difference. Um, results don't suggest radical difference, but that doesn't mean there's not tactical differences. Of course, there's tactical differences. Each manager sets up slightly differently, changes things. Um, we'll have to wait and see. But on the day, you know, I, I say it to you endlessly because it's it's a fact of what we do, and that's making sure our players are aware, but not so aware that they forget to play themselves. And maybe that's a challenge we've got to get right. You know, giving them enough, but not too much, and making sure that we're aware of what our part of the game is um, to take it on. So, but no, they're a decent outfit without a doubt. Can I just check, Dominic Calvert-Lewin, is, is he fit for this game? He came through training today. Yeah, OK, thank you. Thanks, Ian. We'll go to Julia. <clears throat> um, Nottingham Forest, high energy, high tempo team, scored six goals in the last three games. How do you go about matching that pace and energy then, especially after the disappointment at Chelsea? Well, I think the, the physicality of games, we've proven this season statistically how powerful we can be. Um, and we've done it many occasions, so we've got to get that right. And that's, it should be a given, it's not always. Uh, we, we certainly didn't supply that side of the game on, on Monday, so that's got to change. Um, the idea of, of players being up for it, the ideas of playing your game, the ideas of the tempo of the game, they're things that at Goodison we're looking to have more of a say in. You know, away from home it's sometimes difficult, but at Goodison we've been trying to make it the right place for us to play and, and control games with or without possession. Yeah, but forget that you can control uh, control games without possession as much as you can with possession, with shape and with your organisation, but also with your physicality, the pressing in, involved in football. So we've been trying to do that. We've got to do it better. It's simple as that. We've got to do it all departments better than Monday. That's without a shadow of a doubt. But remind ourselves of some of the good stuff that we've been doing even during a tough run. Um, and also trying to remind the players, look, it's not their fault nor mine what's happened, but it's happened. You know, and I'm trying to keep pushing that away. I, I, I spoke to him, I wondered, Monday, was there a little hangover from that? You know, because that was another two points after a big win and an important win, you get to him and everyone's going, Phew. but I said, lads, it's, it's gone, you know. These knocks keep coming. It's Everton Football Club. It's been three years of knocks, three years of negativity, it seems to me, and there's certainly been lots of it around, and we've brought most of that on. You know, like myself as manager, you know, I've played my part in it more recently as well, so there's no, there's no brushing it away. But the club really has allowed itself to be too open to too many. You know, we're, if you think about the, the, the sort of bottom half of the Premier League, no one really talks too much about other people having bad runs or anything. You know, they all talk about Everton because it's made it. We made it an easy story. We've got to change the story. I've been trying to. I tried it. They told me when I got it to tell the truth. That's all they wanted. The fans. I told them the truth at the end of last season. I want spraying champagne around. I said that there is miles to go. Absolutely miles to go to correct this situation. This season has proved that. You alter it back in a different way and you go, well, has there been progress? 35 points, yes, with six to go. It's out the window. I've, got, I've, I've cleared my mind of it and I think everyone should because whether it's right or wrong and all the rest of it, the facts are the facts and the table says what it says. So now we've still got lots of work to do. So with that then, you know, the situation, I think some fans feel the club is maybe just the wider club is in, is in limbo at the minute. Don't know what's happening with the takeover. Don't know what's happening with an appeal. How do you then with the players, if you can park that, how do you get the players to park all that? Well, it's not easy, because the noise around here is so intense, you know, and, and rightly so, I've got used to it, you know, big badge, big club, so that's what comes. So, sort of growing and handling that expectation, myself, the staff, the players, some have been here longer, obviously, and understand it better, Seamus and Driss has been in and out, you know, and things like that. Um, so there's a handful of players that understand it differently. But that's part of the club. That's part of what it is. It's been a it's been a negative story for three seasons now. We're the only ones that can correct it, along with the help of others. But we've got to start the process. We've had spells of nearly starting that. We've had spells when it didn't quite go to plan, of course. And this has been a really tough spell. I just added more fuel to it by Monday. This adds more fuel to the Everton story. We've been trying to correct it, but it's. You know, to give you a bigger picture view, you know, I didn't walk in here and it's just like a building plot where it's perfect and you go, right, put the foundations in, we'll build it, it'll be amazing. I walked in and that wall falls down and as I'm repairing that one, that wall falls down and then when I repaired that one, that one falls down. And it just keeps, you know, something else turns up. So it's a constant work in progress, hence why I said last summer, I said, this ain't going to be a walk in the park, we've just taken one step, but there's lots more steps and there still is. Way, way, way more to go before Everton gets back to being the Everton that everyone thinks it is. But there's a lot of hard work to be done. Uh, but it needs to be done quickly, of course. On the pitch then, two wins in 19. Situations like this can see, you know, forget all the other stuff, see players' heads go down when results aren't going their way. Is everyone still together? Is everyone still with you? Yeah, but well, you can ask them. Um, Monday night they weren't, but that can happen. It happened to us second or third game of the season, whatever it was at Villa. 
you know, it was only early in the season and it just looked disjointed, not the energy, not the heartbeat of a side. And that was early in the season. So it can happen from time to time. Took a knock with the points again, whether that had an effect as well. You can't quite measure that, not totally, because you can't look inside of a human being. They're all humans. Um, but no, I think they're all knows who's pointing in the right direction. And I think that's important. That's what we've been trying to build here. It's very tough, you know, because there's always so much noise about it all the time. Like I say, clean it up. You know, if you imagine, I'm picking up the bits of seven different managers who have been here in seven different years and all looking for the magic key to unlock Everton Football Club. Seven different managers, you know, all with their different skill sets, Champions League winners and all the rest of it. You know, it's a tough ask. And now I'm trying to do my variants of it at the end of all that, and not with hundreds of millions of pounds, just trying to do it from building and changing the culture and adding to the culture and the environment and layer it all up. And without eight points, then the work has been clear take off the eight points it's not so clear and now it's murky we've got to clear it up again and I've certainly got to do that as manager I'll take total responsibility for it I have no problem big shoulders for this job does that mean as well it's more difficult for the likes of Chimiti or, or Lewis Dobbin being <coughs> younger members of the squad would they have got possibly more games if it's points it's, it's the ongoing challenge of Everton you know the, one of the another things that I've learned about it you know it's not just off the pitch and all that stuff on the pitch, we're trying to develop younger players. We're trying to bring them through. We've got four or five in their first season in the Premier League, breaking through, working ever so hard. I said in this interview that Hamadou and Jimmy working very hard at their game in the Premier League. So two young midfielders earning their way, you know, learning about what they're doing. Jared's come through doing great. Miko's still early in his days. You know, you're developing these players, but you're developing them to win as well, of course, trying to get the blend right, trying to change the basic principle of the club, trying to judge the money and bring that down, trying to deal with the Premier League, them naughty people who keep taking points off us and trying to get that all to blend back together and stay as one. There's a lot going on. Um, but we're making progress. It just It's just tough when you're not winning games because that's what you're judged on. And I'm well aware of that, trust me. Thanks, Julian. I'll go to Shamir. <coughs> Excuse me. Hi, Sean. Hi. Um, what's the approach been like this week then in training has it been the arm around the shoulder or have you had to kick a few backsides no I'm in the old uh, around the shoulder sorry um, a lot of home truths a lot of sharing truths me included by the way um, you know about what I expect from myself the staff and from the players um, and realigning you know saying right you can only do it as a group you can't do it as individuals and pulling that back together you mentioned the players have been disappointed I must make that clear don't you know, it's a funny thing about football nowadays oh do they care and I, they care Trust me, they care. I care deeply about what we're trying to achieve here, but they care as well. So you've seen the, the reaction that you've been looking for? I've seen the reaction in, in a leveller when you go, right, lads, it doesn't all sort itself out. I've been trying to explain that to you. You have to work to sort things out. So that was a lever on Monday to say, right, OK. Sometimes you need them to, you know, to level you out and go, right, lads, no one gives you anything. I've been trying to preach that since I got in. No one gives you anything. No one gives us time. No one gives us the right noise. Negative story of Evans been there. It's clear. I got it. It was there. It's still there. We're the only ones who can change that to collectively. Are you confident they can put it right with six months? Absolutely. Yeah. How tough has this period been for you personally? How do you stay calm when you know, the Yeah, it's not easy, but you know the the thing is that you know when I when I got the job, trust me, none of this was coming. So that's been a, a real handler for me to to understand what's come this way. But it is. So therefore, I have to rebalance myself, level myself. I go, right, OK, was I expecting that? No, no more me of that. No more me of points deductions and all that sort of stuff. Take it on the chin and move forward. I attempt not to make excuses. I don't think I, I rarely do. I certainly don't intend to. I try and speak in factual terms. Um, it's difficult. It's a, it's a, it, like I said, seven other managers have had to go to find that magic key that unlocks it, and I'm still searching for it. So I think we're doing some good work here, but it, it doesn't, it doesn't alter the fact we're on a really bad run. It doesn't alter that. It's a bad run, and that's a really bad performance on Monday. So don't get me wrong, my words are not trying to alter that. I know my responsibility. And that, so don't get me wrong, my words are not trying to alter that. I know my responsibility, and that's to get this team winning. There is a lot more going on than just that, and that's what I've got to manage. So in answer to your question, I have to find my own parameters and my own guidelines of where it all lives and then measure it as best I can. You mentioned big, big club, big badge. Are you able to switch off when you leave the training ground? Absolutely not. Or is it all consuming? Yeah, you never switch off. Every manager would say, you try, have a couple of beers and you know some food and stuff like that, but deep down it's always worrying. Very rarely switch off in this job. Certainly not here, but I. 
There's a couple of times at Burnley when we had a good run and we'd got in some good competitions and did a bit in Europe and all that. And certain times you go, all right, you know, kind of getting some arts here. But yeah, can't remember ever switching off since I've been here. I'm not bothered. That's the way it goes. It's my job. It's my responsibility is to not switch off. But you do need a bit of downtime. So like I say, the odd gig, which I try and get to, that allows me the rare respite of switching off. And the cinema. If anyone wants to know, little cinema. M&M's, peanut ones, bottle of water, phone off. Two hours of like, oh, and breathe. And then as you're watching the film, you think, I wonder if I could do that. I wonder if I could play that. I wonder if he could play that. So never never quite switches off. What's a good film you've watched recently? I don't know, I haven't. Do you think I've had time recently? <laughs> I don't know if you know, there's been quite a lot going on. So uh, no, it's fair to say I haven't had time to watch too many films lately. A bit of a box set now and again and all that sort of stuff. But The Gentleman, there you go, the, the series, The Gentleman. The film's brilliant. The Gentleman, the series, that's been probably my go-to lately. And how important is a good start on Sunday so that the crowd gets behind you? Every, everything's important now. You know, the, being right for the game, being prepared for the game, starting the game, the middle bit of the game, finishing the game. Everything becomes important. Every detail is important. And I, and I keep expressing that to myself, the staff and the players. Everything needs to be on point. Thanks, Shimon. I thought it was a you mentioned it's been three years of knocks for the club. The fans have really played their part in keeping the club up for the past two seasons. Now it looks like, again, the that's play a big role. How much sympathy do you have? Because you know, supporters ultimately want to go to the game, talk about the game, and having to deal with all the, as you say, everything that's going on. And are you confident the players will reciprocate what the supporters are going to show? Well, I don't know all of it. You know, I said when I got it, and I'm, I still feel it now. I'm earning my spurs. I, I don't think I've never taken um, being a, a coach, manager, player even for granted. Never done that. And I know I'm in my infancy here of earning my spurs, and, and currently not deemed to be doing a very good job of it. That's fine, but 15 games ago, I was deemed to be the Messiah and everything or everything was, was okay. And I had found the magic key. 15 games later, you're not. That's life in football, and that's life in my life in football. Um, in answer to your question about the fans, I've never questioned them. They've been fantastic. They travel, they make a noise, they're with us. They question us, but that's fine. Well, you know, that's, that's part of being a fan. Um, I wouldn't question the fans. I've got no question. All I can ask is them to stay as solid as they can with us. We, we've got to give them more. I've got to give them more. I understand that. But some of the stuff I can't control has affected us. There's no two ways about it. And that's difficult. I can't control everything at the club. I can't control the Premier League and the points. And I can't control all that. Controlling the pitch, I've got to do better. And we've got to do better. And they can hopefully continue to play their part as they have been doing. Would you consider, I know last season maybe didn't work, but the team before in Frank Lampard's here was the culture hours. Would you consider bringing that back again? If no, they spoke time? about it last year, but we didn't get a very good result. So I don't think, you know, we should, to be fair, it's certainly not knocking the fans on this. We shouldn't be relying on that. We should be putting this shirt on the Everton shirt and not relying on that. We should be relying on each other to get out there and go, right, let's get the job done. Let's get the business done. That's what we should be doing. And that's what I keep saying to the players. Yes, fans can help. And they're amazing in their help. But the fact is, we should be going out with a shirt and going, right, we'll take care of ourselves. And that's what we're going to do. And then everyone comes with us. I know injuries don't want to be aggravated, but... Oh, sorry, sorry. Injuries, you don't want to oh, aggravate them, but a couple of weeks ago he said, oh, I'm doing that, and I missed the sore, and it's just a kind of guy. He had a tight calf when he woke up. Do these players need to really grit them teeth, get the teeth at this time of season? And, you know, go yeah, I mean, you can, only, you can only ask what we can of them. If, if their bodies are letting them down, you, you know, it's a risk and reward. Like with Dom, he was close the other day, and then we're like, well, if something happens now, we're three in a week the next week. How do you judge that? You know, it's like, which game's the most important, which game's not? How do you keep people fit? It's that end of the season, you know, where, where you're trying to keep everyone fit. So the medical team, ourselves, are trying to judge it as wisely as we can. The minutes on the pitch, the team that are fit, the ones that are struggling for fitness or bad injuries. It's uh, always a delicate balance. Well, for the players that are tight, the ones that are up and running all the time, you know what it's like. They seem to get in a groove and, you know, your body seems to get used to all the, the strains and the, the feeling of playing constantly. When you get these interruptions, it can be more difficult. But hopefully everyone's going to remain fit. He's getting closer. Uh, but good to have him back. He's good around the group. Um, it's a shame for Pato. You know, Pato come and look sharp the other night. He's been training really well. Just getting back to where I think he can be, because um, I think he's a very good player. And he's and he's very unfortunate with a very awkward, really awkward fall the other night. So he's very unfortunate. So he's the one who, who won't make a, another game this season, I'm sure. Yeah, we'll take one more from you, Phil, at the back. Um, yeah, just one on Nathan. Um, in terms of what you said there about him missing the rest of the season, having to have surgery, what does that mean for his Euros hopes? Well, I don't know on the medical side of the times, um, other than the, this season, as in playing for us, um, but he will have surgery. Um, so 
we hope that goes well and then it's how quickly it settles I'm sure Okay, thanks, folks. We'll move on to the, uh, the interception. Andre Gomez's younger brother, isn't it? <laughs>